Hey guys, it's After Hours at the Philadelphia E-Bike Expo and I'm burning the midnight oil. We're checking out the Junto Gen 1. This is really their first product. Um, really interesting bike. You know, I, I first saw this thing and I was like, okay, it's got a rigid fork, but some bigger tires, gonna give you some comfort and hopefully be kind of stiff and fun to ride around. I noticed that it had a 15 millimeter through axle up front. That's a little bit stiffer. It's kind of a mountain bike type of setup tapered head tube, same thing. Like I just started to, to get into it. Like, you know, what is this bike about? 29er tires uh, by 2.3. So a little bit, little bit fatter, again, comfort, traction, stability. And then back here, this is Shimano SLX with a two-way, actually it's a one-way shadow plus clutch. So has two positions in this up position. It tightens that chain. So you're maybe not gonna get as much uh, kickback or bounce. That's another mountain biking type of thing. A bash guard right here on the chain ring. Nice big pedals, VP. I'm always calling out, you know, pedals. A lot of times you get these cheaper plastic pedals with bikes that are sold direct. Uh, and, and, and that is the case on this bike. This is like an online order type of bike, but it does come in three sizes and you can see them over here. We've got the small in the background, 15 inch frame, medium 17, that's the one I'd be riding. I'm about five nine. And then the large, uh, wait, what was it? 15? 17, 19. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 19. Okay, thank you. I, I'm just kind of getting some help here. Um, I'm here with Sam Ebert. That's Is that right. right? Yeah, yeah, okay. And you're a product manager at the company. I am, yeah, yeah, since the onset. It's neat to talk to someone who's, who's really knowledgeable about a, a bike like this because, you know, moments ago we were going through all the specs and I was recording them for the site and I kept asking little questions and you had some just deeper answers than I'm used to yeah. to hearing. And it wasn't Absolutely. just like, well, it was cheaper. It's like you actually had a reason. One example is the, why don't you come over here with me? Yeah. Um, I was looking at this this bottom bracket right here and trying to figure out the torque sensor. And I see there's like some Bafang labeling. Uh, it sounds like it's, first of all, sealed because mm -hmm. you don't want yeah. this thing creaking or getting Big rusty. Big fan of sealed bearings. The bike is designed for urban environments. Yeah. So uh, loose ball, you know, it's uh, there's more opportunities for grit and sand and debris to kind of ruin your day and ruin your ride. So we yeah. went all sealed throughout the bike, headset. Even the headset, yeah. yeah. But, but the question for, for me, it was like, that would square tapered. You mentioned that and I was yeah. like, well, why not splined? And you I were like, I would love ah. for it to be splined. We chose the square taper so that it would interact with this specific model torque sensor because we really adore how it feels. We don't want the, the user uh, accelerating based on their rotations, we would rather it be accelerating based on the amount of effort they're putting into the ride. It's a crisp and intuitive feeling and uh, really attaches you to the bike and that's why we're getting people on bikes. It's yeah. to keep them attached to it and, and uh, organically in touch with their, their surroundings as well. Okay, so you know the interesting thing about this bike, coming back to like performance, um, 48.9 pounds, mm -hmm. a little bit lighter, especially yeah. considering it has a 48 volt, 11.6 amp hour battery pack. That's that's above average. Yeah. And we've got a 350 watt nominally rated Bafang hub motor geared in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, peaks out, you know, probably above 500. So you're, you're getting a, a little bit of more of a compact design, lighter weight, but still higher power with a, a geared design versus a yep. gearless. Yeah, and, and torque is a really important metric for me. and. Uh, uh, I'd rather have a high torque, lower wattage motor than a low torque, high wattage motor. Yeah. And voltage plays into pretty much how much power you can deliver in a moment's notice to your motor. And that is uh, that's what we focused on with this design. Philadelphia has a, a, an interesting terrain and topography where you sometimes have to make very quick decisions and sometimes you have to climb up very quick and steep hills. Sure. So it works well. With it's, and it's a great lead in. So about 60 Newton meters of, of torque is what we were talking about. It's pretty great for, for yeah. a hub motor. Um, you know, one of the trade-offs of a hub motor is like unsprung weight, but there's no rear suspension here. Mm -hmm. A little bit more weight towards the rear of the bike, uh, but we, we actually weighed it from, from the saddle, and I think it tipped forward. Yeah, so when making these bikes, I come from a background of mountain bike racing, and uh, I really appreciate a, a good front center on my bike. And what that really means is that I prefer to be sort of planted between the wheels rather than on top of the rear one. Yeah. It allows me to put right. more weight on my front wheel and gain more traction. It also gives me a bit of a tougher, confident feeling on the handlebars, which is good when navigating traffic and tight situations. It really helps you take your lane. Um, and uh, sort of continuing into this idea of the, uh, the unsprung weight in the back, you're absolutely right. Hub drive is really something that belongs on a hardtail bicycle. Yeah. At least that's how we feel. And uh, 
we we hmm. accounted for suspension with the plush tires on this bike and that is another thing i learned pretty much commuting on my race bikes in the past yeah. uh, that i could really gain quite a bit of efficiency by keeping the weight of my bicycle down by keeping it rigid and really focusing on dialing my tire pressure to my weight preferences yeah. and ride preferences. Well, this is, it's rated like 40 to 65 PSI. Mm -hmm. And as a lighter guy myself, I'm like 135 pounds. So yeah. I'd probably bring the pressure down in favor of comfort, mm -hmm. but I'm still gonna get that, that it's gonna be compliant. Oh, it's gonna yeah. be fast yep, yep. because it's, it's rigid. And I love that the fork matches. So paint match fork, yeah. you can see that over on the gray as well. The colors are, are interesting. The small only comes in, in the blue colorway. Mm -hmm. Medium comes in gray or blue. And then the large 19 comes in just gray. Yep. So there's, you know, it, it sounds like you did some user testing and stuff. Yeah. But the fork, the other really interesting thing about it, it's not just, oh, it's color matched, but you've got some bosses here. So you could you could mount like a porter rack on it mm -hmm. or you could mount a fenders. And I was looking at the back and I remember I was like, well, why, aren't, why didn't you put bosses back here for a rear rack? And you told me. Yeah, so you uh, can run it cleanly without bosses, but if you want to, you can attach a C-post collar here mm -hmm. that actually we sell. You just contact our customer support and it uh, positions two eyelets right below the, uh, the clamp assembly. Higher than they would have been on the seat stays, and right. why? Why is that important? Well, so to fit this size wheel, which we think is excellent for efficiency, mobility, smoothing out the small bumps and all the chatter Again, of the road. Again, 29er, right? 29er, yeah, it's, it's yep, the larger yeah. diameter. We, uh, on the small, unfortunately, the wheel exceeds the height Let's go where over the to it. Let's go to exits. It. Yeah, look at this thing. See how low, they, they wanted that top tube to be lower for, for petite riders, right, I'd imagine. Exactly. Right, yep. but then the seat stays are so low, but you, you you, a lot of times those aftermarket racks, they've got those silver adjustable things and they just can't get all the way down here. Yeah, but the exactly. seat collar adapter makes it yep, work. Yep. That's and awesome. If, and you can even, if you're okay with a lighter load, you could even use a mono stay rack to actually make the distance just to this single brake bridge boss here. Yeah, and that would be, you know, the other consideration when when you drop the saddle lower, yeah. the beam racks don't really worry. You know, at some point, like mm -hmm. when you're running this large of tire, yep. you, you gotta make some compromises. I also asked about bottle cage bosses and you were like, well, you know, they don't really yeah. fit on this frame in this configuration. We'll think about that for the future of yep. ways yeah. to bring yeah, it's it. It's definitely a plan. We've got huge plans, uh, diverse catalog that we're working on. We just like to put a lot of care into each and every design and as you can see we're kind of approaching this from a different perspective we we build the bikes sort of from the street up and uh, none of them really you know I, I don't want to, to speak to anyone else's brand but uh, we couldn't feel good about picking a frame off the shelf that is intended to be a regular pedal bicycle and putting a motor on it yeah so we said we're building an e-bike let's start with the motor yeah. and the frame followed and it is purpose-built I mean I can see the internally routed cables mm -hmm. and uh, another thing disc brakes you got 180 millimeter tetro hydraulic disc yeah, brakes very powerful. with motor inhibitors yep something yep. a lot of people cut out on and you said gosh I do track standing at lights and yeah and if I had a torque sensor activating my motor every time I tried to, to torque uh, to track Stand, you know that that could be disastrous. I could lurch into the oncoming traffic. Yeah. I, I just prefer it at my will to transform back to the bicycle I knew growing growing up. Yeah. So I'm gonna showcase some of the things we just talked about. We got these three finger hydraulic disc brake levers, adjustable mm -hmm. reach. So if you yep, get the small frame, through. you can bring them in a little bit, and then he, that that's the extra cable. So there's you know a the little bit more going on up here, but yeah, those cables it's are busier. We actually have it packaged differently. So out of the box, which we also designed ourselves, so that this bike comes very assembled. Yeah. You can see that they. Uh, in, some people may not like this aesthetic, but we do t keep track of the cables a little bit better in this setting if people are worried about snags or such. Uh -huh. We're working to integrate everything. Um, it's, a, it's a very time uh, uh, sensitive project, though, so we're trying to get things out the door and get people on our bikes. Okay, so the, the other interesting thing I wanted to point out is that this is a suspension adjusted uh, yeah. fork and we, we so call it suspension corrected the suspension corrected I'm yeah. sorry so this is so cool this is I mean you see all that extra clearance right there and back to that tapered head tube yep and it'll the 15 millimeter ready wheel yeah we, uh, we pretty much said you know what we're believers in pneumatic suspension 
but there are people out there uh, who have wrist injuries, have carpal tunnel, their, uh, their uh, anatomy might cause them to be very uh, weight forward. Yeah. In which case, uh, you know what, suspension does work for those people. So this bike is designed to accept a 100 millimeter suspension fork mm -hmm. without any adjustments in the geometry. That is so cool. So yeah, so, and the minute ago he said we believe in pneumatic suspension. What he was saying is we didn't want to put a cheap spring suspension on this, but we yeah. wanted to keep the price reasonable and we wanted to target that urban like you know a lot of people won't need suspension they can enjoy this yeah. and those bigger yep. tires so the price on this is 22 22 yeah. and i was like what the, what does that mean sam yeah well we wanted to keep this cheap direct to consumer and get people on a bike that is worth it to them but and the warranty on this can you can you remind me is it yeah so it's a two-year comprehensive warranty uh components you'd likely have better luck going through the manufacturer but the frame and fork have a seven-year warranty behind them and uh, as long as our customer service approves of uh, component adjustments, uh, you, you won't see some ridiculous void. And we really are setting out to have industry leading customer service. Yeah. If you have questions about e-bikes and call in and our bike isn't right for you, expect us to recommend someone else's that is. Okay, okay. And uh, yeah, there's a lot more to say here, but I, before we jump into the more of the company stuff, uh, I wanted to call out, Again, that this is a nicer derailleur, that you've got the Shadow Plus to keep that chain from bouncing too much, but there's also a slap guard. And then I think the range on this, it's 11 to 42. Yeah. So it's a wide range and you can climb, you can also go a little bit faster. The top assisted speed is 20 miles per hour, so yeah, it's, it's class, a class one, one. Yep. which we're, is fine. We're pretty, uh, we're pretty uh, involved in our city's ongoing understanding of e-bikes mm -hmm. and we work with the Bicycle Coalition here and uh, New York is having some growing pains with, with e-bikes, largely due to some throttles and- yeah, delivery stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, and the, the infrastructure not truly supporting e-bikes because they're, they are a different mode of transportation. So what we're doing is kind of setting ourselves at a point where we are future-proofing our bike. Our bike physically has uh, use, utilizes standards that are here to stay. Yeah. Modern 31.8 bars, 30.9 seat post. That's the clamp uh, diameters and yep. then the seat post. So if you wanted to put a seat post suspension, 30.9 millimeters, mm -hmm. and that's another way to add comfort yeah. here. And then outside of the uh, physical dimensions, if you look at the specs of our bike, 350 watt is almost legal in Europe. 750 watt maximum in the United States is great, um, but will it stay that way? Will it stay that way in every city? Uh, we don't know. 350 watt is a pretty safe number, yeah. and we certainly have the torque and the voltage behind our battery, sure. as, long as, as well as capacity. That's the other thing. Again, back to the 48 volt, 11.6 amp hours on this. It is removable, kind of slides out to the side. Yep. Uh, you can charge it on or off the frame, standard two amp charger, which, you know, again, standard, it's about average. You yep. said it takes- Check the capacity on or off the bike. Yeah, the little LED. You got a lot of blue LEDs on this bike. Yeah. I, I want to point out the comfortable, it's like a gel saddle from Sully Royale. A, a little bit of it, there's more surface area there so that's yeah. so people can ride further without discomfort yeah, yeah. so the you know the saddles is, a, is an interesting uh, it's, a, it's a discussion in itself because a very plush saddle might be miserable for someone to go a long distance with but um, a very skinny one might be even worse yeah. so um, we are all uh, very experienced bike fitters as well so if you have questions about I'm feeling a certain numbness I'm feeling uh, like I'm being positioned on my bike awkwardly and I believe it's coming from the, the saddle, yeah. we likely have answers and recommendations. So um, I don't think there's any one saddle that is suitable for everybody. And I think yeah. we did a pretty good job with this one. But I, I agree. And the Velo ergonomic but locking grips yep. and you've got like 40 millimeters of, of riser adjustment yep. there yeah, for the yeah. stem. And, and you, I mean, the thing is right now they just have this one bike. And so you've got a team that started in 2016. It's mm -hmm. grown to five people and you're focused on one product that you're trying to get it right. You yeah. mentioned future-proofing, and part of that was upgradability yeah. that we talked about. We've got this price point that's pretty reasonable, good warranty, mm -hmm. and then some of the history. So we're in Philadelphia. Yeah, we're in Can you tell me what does love. Junto even mean? So uh, a few, you know, some people here and there have heard of a guy named Benjamin Franklin. Oh, He's yeah. pretty important in these parts, and uh, he started these things back in the day, a couple hundred years ago, you know, uh, call, that he called the Junto Club. Okay. And they, uh, they, uh, they met around the city. They included a vast array of people in considering race, uh, religion, economic background, profession. So it was diverse. Very diverse. And they simply d talked about bettering Philadelphia, perhaps over a few beers. 
and uh, next day went back about their business and I like to think of it as almost a precursor for a lot of the the uh, discussion that took place before the 1776 revolution and also uh, this spirit of American ingenuity. Ben Franklin is famously known for yeah. flying a kite into the sky with a key and yeah. getting shocked by, <laughs> by uh, struck by lightning and uh, it's this it's uh, it's a mythology that I think makes us wonder. It has always led us to be in, uh, intuitive and um, intelligent, and I, I love the meaning in that. Well, it's fantastic because you mentioned the lightning thing, yeah. and now I'm, I'm looking at the yeah, the logo, logo here. You got a lightning, a kite, and then the hand with the, the key, the on, key the on the string. And so this is like a key to transportation. It's electric. You've yeah. got the Junto Club. I mean, it's yep. just it's neat, man. And yeah, and and uh, you know, e-bikes uh, are this incredible solution for personal transit, for urban mobility, and uh, we would love to contribute to that. Um, famous line by DeWitt Clinton of New, of New York, Manhattan fame, yeah. when he was playing in the city, he said, I want it to be like Philadelphia, but make all the streets and avenues wider. <laughs> so uh, he, he wasn't wrong, we have a bit of narrow streets here, but the, the idea that we might be able to take some of the infrastructure back for people on alternative yeah. forms of transportation is amazing. And you know, we say this all the time, but it's true, we're not here to replace your bike, we're here to replace your car. Yeah, if you can't make the streets wider, make the cars narrower, yeah, exactly. so to speak. It's so, pretty narrow. Yeah. Uh, okay, so is there anything else that's, I mean, I, I want to keep us rolling here, yeah. and I was going to jump into the control panels, yeah, yeah. but what else, is there anything else about the frame, and just anything I missed? Um, you didn't really miss much, Corey. You really covered it very well. Uh, one Thanks. thing I would say... Oh, oh the spokes. Yeah, the right? spokes, yeah. 14 gauge up front, 13 gauge yep. in the rear. And look at these reinforcement eyelets. These yeah. rims were... Are, I want to do the thing, okay? Yeah, so sure. earlier we were hanging out, and I have my like little rubber band thing mm -hmm. out here. And you were telling me about the yeah, tires. So, so people don't frequently look at rim width as this very important uh, uh, datum in, in designing their bike, but it's actually hugely important. You'll look at uh, a lot of progressive mountain bike companies, their rims are getting wider and wider. Some of them have yeah. like a 45 millimeter internal diameter. It's really an inner width, actually, if we're being technically specific here. Yeah. Um, but the idea is, if you have a thin rim and a high volume tire, you have this light bulb shape. Yeah. So when you come under stress at an angle, it has a tendency to fold yeah. and sort of be wishy-washy. That, is that what it means, like you burp your tire, like on a Yeah, on a, on a bike? tubeless bike, yeah, um, uh, mountain or road even. Uh, the, the less supported the underside of the tire, the more likely it is to deform mm. and lift the bead off of the, the bead socket. Wow. So when you widen your rim, you get you retain your profile if not widen the tire a little bit yeah. and it's more supported because it will technically rotate more before it deforms on the ground and another thing that's so interesting and relevant to this is um you know they do have wider what is this 25 millimeters you're saying inner inner yeah, width 25 millimeter internal diameter 25 millimeter internal diameter on the rims but also this is 150 millimeter Rear spacing. Uh, rear spacing, yeah. and, and that's above boost. Boost is 148. Yeah, so d we wanted to do a boost spaced hub, and uh, when working with our supplier, Bafong, uh, they're, they're a great company, um, they, they uh, specified that a 150 would be more appropriate for the parameters of the, the motor, the specs itself. Yeah. And um, I guess certainly that means that you'll have to use a, a 150 spaced hub motor, but at the same time, it affords you much more spoke triangulation. Same yeah. reason we went the 36 so it's, it's hole the bracing wheel. angle, so yeah. that the spokes can be further out and it give you that strength and stiffness yeah. for power transfer. Yeah. Um, and I mean, coming back to the front, you got that 15 millimeter through axle. That's just 100, so it's mm -hmm. not boost. But you, and you got the quick release and stuff. But yep. yeah, that's that's kind of still kind of overkill for like kind of an urban yeah, bike. Yeah, absolutely. And then back here. It's just that it's the nuts because they've got this cable. You do have a quick disconnect. Yep. This is something you want to be careful of. You don't lay your bike down on the right side. Try mm -hmm. not to snag this. It's the case with all the hub motor bikes I've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, but but having like a, just a more robust rear end. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like I was speaking to you earlier, uh, the front center of this bicycle will, will really plant you between the wheels. So it... Uh, is, is designed in such a way that the, the front and rear will feel equally planted, even with the weight of the motor added to the back. Okay. 
now have we covered it? I didn't mean to cut you off with the spoke thing. Oh, I think, I think we're pretty much there. Um, let me see if I can think of anything. I mean, you're pretty comprehensive. Thanks. Yeah, I think we're, we're, we, can, we can go for a ride. Well, and we, we're going to hit the, the, how the, the control panel works and stuff. There's the key on the other side. I don't have the key with me. I don't have the charger. Sorry, guys, but it is 2 amp. Gotten some feedback from Sam. You press the little power button there for a second, and I think you actually have to hold it for a yeah, couple seconds. We got five ticks on the left. That's assist level. It seems to start in one, but you can take it to zero, and you can just pedal this like a regular bike. Um, and then on the right, we have five ticks for battery charge level, so 20% increments. You know, what you, what you miss with this is th there are e-bikes that have displays that show your max speed, average speed, trip distance, range, all that fancy stuff. This seems to be pretty durable. It's kind of stays out of the way. It's cleaner than some of those big displays. Yeah, yeah. Philadelphia actually has one of the most appalling rates of bike theft in oh. the nation. And I think we may be number one now re as of, as of we're late. We're number yeah, one. Yeah, we're number one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I've never lost one. There's that, there is that quick release too. You want to, I mean, you could potentially put yeah, like locking a lot of people skewers. don't actually understand uh, through axles, which is a, a good thing. But uh, yeah, we They like we quick release it and they can't get it off. Yeah, That's hilarious. Like, oh, quick release it why isn't it coming it's out it's like a maxle right it threads into the it's a maxle style but it loads like a fox skewer on the on the non-drive side of the bike which is interesting yeah um, it's a kinesis uh skewer we're pretty happy with it so. okay cool yeah. we got the bro talk here with the mountain yeah. bike it used to be a racing mountain bike yeah, so i, I love the technical XC. yeah and uh um so the display i mean it's just you know, there's no USB charger. They're not, it's just not so flashy. It, it, that, that's what I was thinking. But yeah. I must complain. One of my complaints here is like, if I had this bike, I would probably put some tape over this, like some blue tape or just to, because yeah. it's bright. It you, is bright. And you can't really yeah. take that. So at, late at night, and I've done this before with some of my consumer electronics, like my computer had a blue LED light and I yeah. kind of, but so it's solvable. It looks pretty resistant to water. Bafang mm -hmm. is a pretty trusted, well-known company. Yeah, and so it's, it's simple. A very good, uh, salt spray rating, which is very important in the Northeast because because we have a, a, a bad trend of oversalting our roads in the winter. I didn't and, even think uh, about that. Yeah, salt spray is extra corrosive to um, aluminum products huh. and also, of course, steel. But steel is pretty corrosive, easily corroded in, in general. Do, were, were you paying attention to other, like, you know, stainless hardware on this, or are there points that? Oh, it's all stainless or, uh, you know, or 6061 grade aluminum. So yeah, this is a, a bike that's very tough to corrode and it has uh, a very, um, very thick coat of paint on it. Not overly thick that it's dripping off. It's, it's a great, uh, great quality. You don't want to add too much weight either. Too <laughs> of many <course>. coats. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Now we're now we're talking about race bikes again. I know, right? <laughs> there's there's actually I saw a special on Netflix. It was like Jerry Seinfeld doing his original bits yeah. back in New York at the comedy oh, club yeah, where he yeah, started. Yeah, he yeah, said yeah. he had like a closet room. It was just tiny, yeah. and he loved painting it. And he was worried he was going to paint it so yeah. much that he'd run out of space. It's a silly joke, I but I always love looking at his bike in the back of his apartment. He had a specialized at one point in in the in, the, in Seinfeld. Yeah, like and the, he yeah. also had a Klein, which is a very interesting bike. Huh. Like they really pushed the envelope with high end aluminum uh, wow. back in the day. So yeah. I wonder if he Jerry rides Seinfeld. bikes. Good taste in bike? so, Jerry, say hi if you're out there. Come for a ride. Yeah. We comedy and bi on bikes, right? Yeah. We could yeah. do that. Yeah, we're funny guys. Show about nothing. <laughs> so. I think we, we got it now. Is it time for a ride? I think so, yeah. Time for a ride test. Okay, I'm going to hop on this thing. I'll put my helmet on. Will you? Yeah, I, I'm going to put mine on. Sam's going to hop on a bike, and that way we can you can kind of see what's happening, um, what it looks like to have a friend ride along with you. Okay, so I, I always like to ride in, like, the highest level of assist at first to show you guys what the motor sounds like. I'm just going to do that. Pretty good stopping, even with one hand. There is a little bit of a, you know, I like that this is a torque sensor because it feels a bit more fluid. You have to push a little bit, but it's pretty responsive. Um, I was talking to Sam earlier. How many, you said there's like 32 hulls or? Uh, uh, hulls, there are 16, but it's strain gauges. There's uh, over 30. 30 strain yeah. gauges. Okay, yeah, cuz that's what gives you that mid-drive feel with a hub drive. Motor. It is smoother. It yeah. is smooth, you know, again, a torque sensor on this, so it's responsive. There's but you have to work a little bit. When you're in the higher levels of assist, you don't have to really push that yeah, hard. It gives you more control though, like a sustained wheelie. Oh yeah. Well, he's able to wheelie that thing. Um, so anyway, point being, I'm going to put the camera on the frame later and you can maybe hear the um, hear the motor a little bit. 
Also, this floor has some sticky stuff so that people don't fall and it makes some extra noises, so. delay sometimes when I stop pedaling you kind of you can feel the motor kind of and there and you know and that's that's the case for a lot of these bikes because they don't want to <laughs> they don't want to have um, surge where you know you feel like on off so it's pretty smooth it's kind of what I've experienced before on, on systems like this this is what it looks like third person sweet in the inside line here there we go good and again I can't tell exactly how fast we're going because there's no speedometer on this but you could easily mount your phone or something use Strava let's take another lap and there's the cockpit so yeah you know it's it's a bright display you're not gonna have a hard time telling I think even in daylight and we're we're in a pretty dimly lit convention hall right now so keep that in mind Okay guys, before we do more riding, I wanted to point out that the kickstand's actually really nice. It's got a big footprint, it's got kind of a telescoping length, so you can you can lean this bike uh, as much or as little as you need to to get it to, to stand right. And I always appreciate that. It's out of the way, it's not going to hit your crank arms when you move the bike around. Uh, you can see that plastic slap guard there, and it has taken some hits, so the chain's been bouncing around with people going up and down the ramps. But you can also see the, the smaller front chain ring and then that wide range cassette back here. I'm going to shift through the gears. You won't get the same kind of like mashing or um, pressure that you would on a mid-drive. This is an e-bike specific chain, so it's supposed to be rated a little bit higher. Um, again, rust resistant and all that. Listen for the motor kind of delaying on cutoff. Again, I think they did that because they didn't want to have surge and have this like wavy feeling. The thing is, you can override that at any time with those brake levers. So you can pull those, the bike's gonna stop, you can do the track stand thing like Sam was talking about. It's a pretty good system. And again, using kind of tried and true parts. Yeah, the battery, it, you know, it stands out a little bit more, but the position of it's really good. The size is, is, is decent, you know, in terms of capacity and physically it's, you know, it's, it's good stuff. gonna cruise around the little expo track here it should be kind of fun it's nice to have the whole floor to myself tire pressure is a little bit high for me they tend to raise it at these events because you get people of all different weights and you don't want to have like a pinch flat um, I definitely feel there's moments where it's a little bit jarring on the crack but the bigger tires do help so again it's a trade-off I just want to be clear that it's a it's a rigid fork and you know it's an, an all aluminum frame steel can sometimes give you a little bit of vibration dampening of course suspension is kind of my choice as someone with back and neck sensitivity but for kind of a new age electric city bike this thing's pretty awesome so from here you should be able to hear that motor and just kind of see it interacting i've been really pleased with how easily it shifts there's not a lot of mashing <laughs> Perfect. Nice, man. Well, this was tons of fun, Sam. Yeah, I had a great time too. I really appreciate the, you know, when you get to work with someone, you're just the product manager. Yeah. But you're also like an engineer. I mean, you knew all about this. Did you design the product or? Yeah, I'm one half of our design team and we kind of go about it 
uh, from two ways. There's form and there's function. Bicycle is a classic example of that combination. It's always been steeped in beauty and and uh, engineering, really. Yeah. And that's how we approach this. And I think the real beauty behind it is everyone in the company, we have a 40 year span in ages, but uh, we all bring a very unique riding experience to the table and it informs yeah. our, de our designs. And, and, the, and the local approach too. I mean, between yeah. the branding of the company and the story of like how and where you might use this first product. Yeah. I'm excited to see more from you guys. Yeah. That's the Gen 1 Junto. For the full write-up, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, have fun out there, ride safe.